Well, hello. All right, go ahead and get out your notes for Chemistry of Life Part 2. And you want to highlight and write on those notes. Make sure that you're really paying attention. Okay, so the first thing the notes tells us is to think about energy. And energy, we know, is, um, is our ability to do work inside our bodies. You know, I've, I've got a lot of energy is um, the opposite of I'm tired. So energy, it says in your notes, which is represented by E, energy comes from the rapid movement of electrons. So think about, for a second, think about Jimmy Neutron and those electrons moving around and around and around on the atom of the, the cartoon Jimmy Neutron. Well, those electrons... The, that movement is kinetic energy. So the movement of electrons is kinetic energy. While when something is bonded, so there's kinetic energy. But if you think about when something is bonded together, and right here you can see how oxygen is bonded to hydrogen to make water, Those see how the electrons right here are being shared? That is potential energy. So there's potential energy in bonds. So potential energy is stored in the bonds right here. Okay, so this picture is just showing you, if you go back here, um, potential energy, you know, the person on the high dive has more potential energy. When they fall, they're going to fall further. When they jump, they're going to fall further. So potential energy, as far as um, compounds go, energy is stored in bonds. So like when you break down sugar in your body, you release energy from the bonds. When you break down fat in your body, you release energy from the bonds. Okay, so if you look with the notes where it says chemical properties, it says an element's or molecules' properties are usually associated with the number of electrons. So remember, protons and neutrons are in the middle. Electrons are moving around the edge. So that's kinetic energy. Okay, periods are going to run horizontally. So go ahead and maybe write the word out, periods. And families run up and down. So periods run this way. So potassium over, that's a period, and a family runs this way, up and down. It doesn't matter if it's up or down. But the So when you look at a periodic table, the ones that are in a row beside each other have something in common. And then they have something else in common as they run up and down. So it says elements behave similarly as you go down a column or family. So, so hydrogen right here and lithium have something in common while lithium and beryllium also have something in common. So they, they're in order by the way their chemical properties are. So are they solid or at room temperature or they have one electron in their outer shell, something like that. Okay, so types of bonds. So I'm on part three, chemical bonds. Covalent are the strongest types of bonds. So covalent, there's, there's periods, and there's families. Okay, so covalent bonds are the strongest ones. And you can see hydrogen right here has two electrons in its outer shell. But carbon, if you look at just carbon is sharing those outer le electrons. So, covalent bonds share electrons. So make sure you understand, covalent are the strongest and they share electrons. On number two it says they always create a molecule. So they always create a molecule um, and that's two or more atoms bind together. Okay, so you can see right here, this is polar. Water is polar. And that means it has a negative and a positive. If you look at ox oxygen, it has a negative charge. And these hydrogens have a positive charge. So a molecule that has a negative 
and a positive is what we call polar. Polar is any molecule that has two charges. It says carry an electrical charge at opposite poles, so the oxygen at one end and the hydrogens at the other end, have different charges. Something that's nonpolar would have the same charge throughout. So an example of something that's nonpolar, let's go with a pen here, nonpolar would be a fat or a lipid. It's got the same charge all the way through it, but a water is polar. So out beside polar, make sure and write water. Water is polar. Another thing that's polar is the phosphate in a phospholipid. So a phosphate in a phospholipid is polar and water is also polar. Non-polar molecules would be fats, lipids, things, things that don't mix with water. So non-polar molecules are going to be the same charge throughout and not mix with water. So we could say that non-polar molecules are hydrophobic. Okay, structural formula is just going to be how it's shaped. And so when we get to the molecules that we build in class with the paper, um, like we'll build protein, we'll build DNA, what we've been looking at is the structural formula. So the structural formula will be how it's shaped, like this. While the molecular formula is just, the CH4 right here. So this is the molecular formula, CH4. There's one carbon and four hydrogens, while this is the structural formula. And it shows the structure, so that's pretty easy. This is the structure, and this just shows the number of molecules. Okay, so covalent bonds we said share and are really strong. Ionic bonds, they don't share. They swap. They steal and give and swap bond, electrons. So they steal and swap electrons. And these are strong bonds, but not as strong. So covalent bonds are stronger. So ionic bonds, it says fairly strong. These bonds are created by gaining or losing electrons. When dissolved in water, ions are created. Do you remember that an ion is a charged particle? So write that in. An ion is a charged particle. So um, like a calcium plus. That plus makes it an ion. Okay, so when they're dissolved in water... Uh, it, it's it's going to, when dissolved in water, ions are created. So, in, in dissolved in water, molecules with charges are created, such as salt. And salt is sodium chloride. Sodium, whoops, sodium chloride. Okay, so um, maybe draw this in. A cation, and it says the word on your notes. is a molecule with a positive charge, like the calcium plus. An anion is a molecule with a negative charge. Well, I was trying to come up with a way to remember this, and a really easy way to remember it is that a cation has a plus sign in it. Or you could think about a cat with plus signs for eyes. Okay, so cation is a molecule with a positive charge. A molecule or an element, an atom with a positive charge. So this is a cation, while this is an anion. So make sure you know the difference in that, cation and anions. Okay, hydrogen bonds, most important ones for us. Hydrogen bonds is what's found in water. When water molecules stick together, when water molecules stick together, 
It's a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds are fairly weak bonds, and it's a hydrogen bound to something negative. Normally, that something negative is, is going to be carbon. But in this picture, you can see it's hydrogen. There's your hydrogen bound to this nitrogen. So it's a hydrogen atom bound to something, normally oxygen. And it even says in your notes, usually oxygen. These are the most important things in biology because water and then something else really important has hydrogen bonds, and that's DNA. Okay, if you look at DNA, there's a picture of DNA. It's a good picture, huh? Okay, I'm just kidding about that. In DNA, the nitrogen bases bind together with hydrogen bonds. So where that yellow is. Hydrogen bonds bind the nitrogen bases together in DNA. That's hydrogen bonds. All right, chemical reactions. To make a bond requires energy. To make a bond requires energy. So we're going to take these hydrogen molecules and add them to these oxygen molecules, and we're going to make water over here. So that's what this is, is water. So a chemical, right here, it shows this arrow. A chemical reaction took place right here. So it says to make a bond, so in these bonds is energy. In those bonds, especially hydrogen bonds, but in those bonds is energy. To break a bond gives off energy. Okay, so do me a favor, out beside, to make a bond, I want you to write in the word dehydration. That's what it's called when you break a bond. You remove water and you break a bond. Okay, where it says to I'm sorry, I said that wrong. You remove water and you make a bond. So out beside make a bond, you wrote in dehydration. To break a bond, you write in hydrolysis. And that's where you add water and break. So dehydration, remove water, make a bond. Hydrolysis, add water, break a bond. Okay, so the reactants, if you look at the okay, if you look at the chemical reaction here, you got hydrogen plus oxygen makes or equals or together that arrow makes water. Okay, so these are the reactants. So all the hydrogen plus oxygen, and it actually, it might be better. Okay, so instead of looking at those dots, look at this right here. I think that will help you. Okay, so the hydrogen and the oxygen are both reactants, while the water is the product. That's what's made. Okay, so it says re reactants are left of... Or the left of the arrow or the equation. Products located to the right. And this just demonstrates the, the law of conservation of matter. You got the molecules plus the molecules equals all the molecules together. So it's the same there. Okay, if an element is on one side of an equation, it must be on the other side too. So you have four hydrogens here, one, two, three, four. And over here you have two times two, if you look right here, two times two hydrogens, that's four hydrogens, and only two oxygens. So the chemical reaction could go the other way. So you could take the water and break it apart into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, so I hope this helps.